What's going on guys? Riley here from RP Productions. Today we're gonna go over the things that you need to know before you go out and buy a six gen Camaro. So this video mainly is targeting prospective buyers or if you're just really interested in what an owner thinks about this car, kind of what's what are some of the first things that would break on this car? Uh, what are some good things, what are some bad things? We'll start this video off by talking about some of the negative things with this car and then we'll move into some of the positives. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this video started with the first negative thing about this car is you can expect to have a pretty thin paint. And what I mean by that is that the front bumper on your car will collect quite a bit of rock chips. It's just, it's just kind of inevitable. My recommendation is to get your car, at least the front half of the car, uh, wrapped with a clear bra, which is basically just a, you know, a clear protective coating for your vehicle, and that would help against rock chips. At the bare minimum, a ceramic coating would help a little bit. But since this car has pretty thin paint, that means you know rock chips are very easily attained, uh, swirls are pretty easily attained in the paint, so definitely you wanna coat this paint with something, and also I'll add to this, when you first buy your vehicle, you'll definitely want to clay bar it, because something is up with just Chevys in general, I know it's like this for the Camaros and the Corvettes. Uh, I guess they sit at the rail yard for a long time, or. I don't exactly know why, but they get covered in rail dust. So you'll want to clay bar your vehicle before doing anything really. I mean, with, you know, I clay barred this thing with 30 miles on it. And clay barring this thing with 30 miles on it almost ruined the whole entire clay bar, it was that bad. So moving on from paint now, let's go ahead and talk about some of the mechanical flaws with the six gen Camaro. And the first one I'd like to mention today is going to be the problem with the rear diff on this car. So the rear diff on this car is, oh my. <laughs> oh, damn. Well, that was pretty cool. So that's a Cam C6 ZR1, and uh, he just made quite a, <laughs> quite a show. <laughs> Anyways, back on topic now. So the rear diffs in these cars are kind of the weak point. Uh, you'll definitely want to change the rear diff fluid at bare minimum before like 10 to 15,000 miles. A lot of people do it after the first like 2,000 just to get the break-in period done. But the break-in period on these cars gets a lot of, I guess, metal shavings and stuff in that rear diff fluid. And a lot of people have been complaining of their rear diffs just kind of failing, a, a loud whining noise. Um, so I would definitely say the rear diff in this car is not exactly its strong point. And along with that, the other weak point, which is also you know in the rear of the vehicle, would be the half shafts. So the half shafts in this car are kind of notorious for breaking. They don't exactly snap, but they kind of break in the area that is kind of close to where this thing connects to the diff. Now the information in this video that's not first-hand experience is mainly coming from different Facebook groups that I'm a part of, like the 6 Gen Camaro owners page. And there's a couple other ones, but I vividly remember one guy who was basically complaining that he went, just took like a normal left or right turn and all of a sudden his half shaft just kind of broke. There's also been numerous people break them uh, by doing launches and stuff. So if you buy a manual, that's kind of where the problems occur most of the time. I haven't seen too many automatics have any problems. But if you buy a manual, you definitely don't want to just dump the clutch at like 4,000, 5,000 RPM. That's just not a great idea. So if you're gonna buy this car and you're gonna drag race it, you have to learn how to kind of feather it and slip the clutch a little bit, uh, which takes a little bit of practice. Now, keeping with the mechanical problem theme that we have going here, now let's move on to the motor. So the overall, the motor on this car is actually great. With that being said, I have seen several of them blow up for no reason before like 2,000 to 3,000 miles. It's just, I don't know. Now, granted, that's the case with a lot of manufacturers. You know, some engines are just, they got stuff wrong with them from the factory. And that's why I always tell people, you know, put about 5,000, 10,000 miles on your car before you go and modify it. That way, if, you know, if you had a bad motor or something, the problems will kind of sort themselves out, uh, you know, before you dump a bunch of money into your car and then blow it up and then it all falls back on you because you can't make a warranty claim. But yeah, for some reason, I have seen like somewhere between six to 10 of these LT1s just kind of go bye-bye for no real reason. Now don't get the wrong impression that this motor's bad because it's not, and generally that won't be the case. I'm just trying to mention stuff that I have seen somewhat regularly on you know Facebook groups and stuff, and that's just something that I would take note of. Uh, just kind of be careful your first few thousand miles with the car. The brake dust on all of the six gen SS Camaros, regardless of what brake option you have, is absolutely horrible, so just brace yourself for that one. You'll wanna buy quite a bit of wheel cleaner. 
Another annoying feature about this car is the one to four skip shift feature, which basically, if you don't know what it is, I've mentioned it several times in videos, but for those of you who are new, essentially it's a feature within the transmission that will make you go from first gear to fourth gear under light acceleration in order to save fuel. However, there is a way around this. If you go buy like a $25 piece that Fast Tech Performance sells and you install it basically into your transmission, it's just like this little I don't even know what it is, but it's like this little plastic thing and you just stick it in your transmission and the problem goes away and you won't have to deal with that, but it's something very annoying when you first buy your car. If you opt for the NPP exhaust, which is the dual mode exhaust that has the basically quiet mode and the loud mode, when you have the exhaust set in quiet mode, you will probably notice that there is an exhaust rattle coming from the valves that direct the airflow to the basically the quiet mode. This rattle can be quite annoying. There's not a fix for it other than changing your exhaust or just leaving it in loud mode the entire time. So that's one thing that's pretty annoying and that's also part of the reason why I switched my exhaust out for a louder one, just because I never even used the quiet one. So I was like, well, if it's gonna be in loud exhaust mode, might as well make it really loud exhaust mode. And lastly, the last negative thing I will talk about is interior rattles. I've seen a lot of people have problems with their doors rattling. Thankfully, fingers crossed, I have not had any door rattles with this car, which I am super thankful for because that is one of the most annoying things. You know, when you buy a new car and all of a sudden stuff just starts rattling for no reason, that can be a bit of a pain. But I have seen a lot of people complain about it on Facebook and stuff. So I'll definitely say it's still a problem, but I have not personally experienced it. All right, enough talking negative about this car because definitely the pros outweigh the cons with this thing. Uh, the first thing I wanna talk about that is great about buying a six gen Camaro is the aftermarket for it is great. And I'm not necessarily meaning, you know, power adders and stuff like that. While that stuff is fantastic and there's plenty of options there, I just mean, you know, different cosmetic mods you can do. I mean, the Mustang and the Camaros are just those two cars that have a ton of aftermarket possibilities. The Dodge guys, the aftermarket, it's there, but you have to kind of go searching for it. It's not just all on one website. All the Ford guys, they have AmericanMuscle.com. All of us Camaro guys, we have Fast Tech Performance. But just the wide variety of just different aftermarket things for these cars, it's great. So, you know, if you buy it, you can definitely go and make it your own, which is really nice instead of just seeing, you know, the same car over and over again with just identical looks. Now, probably one of the biggest pro about this car is the fact that it is the best performance bargain that you can buy in terms of, you know, the American cars in this segment. So it, this is faster and handles better than a Mustang, faster handles better than a Scat Pack Charger or Challenger. I mean, just overall, this whole package, this is the car you want to buy if all you care about is the performance. The Mustang and the Challenger, they're, you know, a little bit more comfortable, I would say, a little bit more daily drivable, a little bit more livable. That's not to say this one's not livable because it is. You just kind of have to get in the mindset of like, all right, I'm gonna go drive, you know, my sports car now. Also with that being said, this doesn't just apply to, you know, the American competitors, but this car, the six gen Camaro, is just as good as cars that cost two to three times as much. I mean, the performance bargain with this car is absolutely fantastic. I mean, that's why I bought one. I wanted to give this a shot to just see how good this car is. And from a performance standpoint, it's absolutely flawless. So now let's talk about the warranty on this car. So a lot of people have this misconception that if you take your car to a track, the warranty claims are not covered because you are racing your car. With the six gen Camaro platform, that is not true. You can buy this car, take it directly to a drag strip or a racetrack and race your car and you're covered all day long under warranty until you do aftermarket modifications, uh, you know, such as a tune or headers or whatever. Now, granted, if you know how warranty claims work, you know, they have to be able to prove what you did to the car caused the malfunction. So that gets into a whole different video, but a general statement, you can buy your car, take it to a track, cover it under warranty, no problem. So that's the main points I wanted to cover, you know, the exterior looks good on this car, interior looks good, everything's functional, the steering wheel, the shifter, I mean, everything is, it's nice to touch, nice to look at, performance bargain. It's just, it really is a great car. I know I mentioned some negatives here at the beginning, but guess what? There's negatives with every car on the road. If this car was a Mustang, I'd be sitting here making the exact same video telling you about the common problems with a Mustang and so on and so forth. So if those things I listed here at the beginning of the video, you know, don't bother you too much or there's something like, yeah, I can live with that, then, you know, by all means, I would highly recommend going out and buying a six gen Camaro. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm hoping this video will catch on and kind of start a trend of owners taking their vehicle out and telling you the things that you need to know before you go out and buy one because 
you know, YouTube is a great resource. And I know, you know, before I went and bought this thing, I was watching countless YouTube videos on it. And I wanted to be like, all right, is that really what I want? And so, you know, I, I know a lot of people do the same thing. So I hope you guys found this informative and hopefully it helps some of you out. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments and I'll try to get to as many as possible. Also, for those of you who are six gen Camaro owners, you know, feel free to write me in the comments what you guys also dislike, like about your car and some things I maybe missed. And also, if you're, you know, a Mustang owner or Challenger owner, whatever, go ahead and write me a comment telling me what do you think people should know before they go out and buy your vehicle. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you guys for watching this video. I will see you on the next one. Take it easy.